Hello and welcome to another video from the Aspiring Medics. If you're new here, my name is Arisma and I'm now a third year medical student at King's. In today's video, we're going to be taking you through the verbal reasoning section of the UCAT and we're going to be doing a walkthrough of sorts. So taking you through the different types of questions and example questions and explaining how we reach the correct answer choice. If this sounds interesting, make sure to check out our channel because we post weekly videos to help you ace your med school application. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. So let's start off with an overview of this section. So what is the verbal reasoning section all about? This section assesses your ability to critically evaluate written information. So written text, verbal text. This section is 21 minutes long and you have to answer 44 questions in this section. What kinds of skills does this section test you on? Firstly, drawing inferences. So if you have some written information already given to you in the form of a passage, you need to draw inferences. What did the author mean in this sentence? What is the conclusion of this passage? Uh, what are the themes of this passage and so on? It also assesses your ability to think critically and your critical reasoning skills. So that is tested, especially in the true, false, can't tell type questions, where you have to use your critical reasoning skills to decide if a statement logically follows the passage or not, or that you can't tell. And it also assesses your ability to critique materials, to find flaws in certain written text and so on. Now, the types of questions, there are two types. First is drawing inferences. So where you use critical thinking skills to draw inferences or conclusions from the passage and common questions are what is the theme of the passage what did the author mean and so on and second we have the true false can't tell type questions where you have to decide if a statement follows logically based on the information in the passage and in the passage alone it's really important to remember that you should not take in any of your own knowledge into the entire UCAT exam do not use your own knowledge just use the knowledge given to you in the passage or in the information given in the question for any section this is not specific to just the verbal reasoning section. In this section, you get 11 sets of four questions each. So you have 11 passages and you answer four questions on each of those passages. So there is a different number of drawing inferences versus true, false, can't tell type questions um, in every single exam. So let's go through the first type of question, which is drawing inferences, where you draw conclusions from the passage. So this is our first question. These are just the first two paragraphs. So pause the video and read the passage. Now, I've just underlined what I think are the key points from both of these paragraphs, and this might be a useful activity for you as well. So the first paragraph talks about how war has been going on since forever, and perhaps aggression is a part of human nature. Uh, but it also talks about how war is obviously very unethical and unspeakable things happen during it. So it kind of sets the tone for the passage. The second paragraph talks about the Geneva Conventions and how it is a protective measure in war. So they protect combatants, they also protect civilians, and they've given examples of specific wars where the Geneva Conventions have helped. Now this is the third paragraph. Again, pause and read if you need to. So this paragraph talks about the separation of combatants and civilians and how in modern war it's really easy to harm civilians and they're talking about mass bombings in the second world war and so on and they end with talking about the use of drones and how they have been proven to be a safe and reliable method of attacking soldiers or terrorists but it has raised lots of ethical questions because these people are in civilian areas so basically this entire passage is talking about war it's talking about the difference between civilians and combatants so it's talking about the ethical issues related to that and it's also talking about the Geneva Conventions which are protective measure to prevent this from happening. So let's go through the questions. Now the first question is, the Geneva Conventions are designed to, and you have four options. Obviously, when you get the question, the passage is next to you. So I've put the relevant paragraph next to the question. Pause and think of the answer now. So if you look at the second sentence that I've underlined right here, they protect civilians caught up in the zone of war. So the correct answer is option C. Now, the next question is one conclusion that can be drawn from the passage is that, again, this is a very drawing inferences type question. So what is the main conclusion? What is the theme of the passage? Those questions are really, really common. So again, 
I've put the relevant paragraph up and let's go through the options. So humans will always fight one another. That is definitely something that the passage has talked about. There were no humanitarian conventions before 1949. That has not been mentioned in the passage at all. There is no justification for the conflict in Afghanistan. Again, that's not been mentioned at all. They've just mentioned that there was a conflict in Afghanistan and that the Geneva Conventions protected people there. And lastly, that civilians in civil wars have no legal rights. Obviously, that is not true. And so the correct answer is option A. And you can see that here as well. Humans have fought each other since the dawn of civilization. So they're really talking about how war um, and fighting is kind of part of human nature. Next, um, according to the passage, the writer most probably agrees with. So these are really common questions as well. And this is just kind of a complicated way to ask what is the theme or what is the conclusion of this passage? Because the author and the writer probably agrees with the conclusion of the passage. So again, it's more of a drawing inference conclusion kind of question. So let's look at the options and let's look at the passage. So the first one is that the Geneva Conventions are ineffective. The author has not spoken about that at all. They've just listed out what the Geneva Conventions are and in what wars it's been used before but um, the author has not spoken about the Geneva Convention's efficacy. The second question is the mass bombing of cities in wartime is an international crime which is true this is something that they've mentioned. C is there will be fewer wars in the future again we don't really get the author's opinion in this passage so we don't know if the author will agree with that um, and lastly that developments in technology will prevent wars. Um, not really the author hasn't mentioned that in fact they spoke about drones and they raised ethical issues about drones which is a development in technology so um, the author is most likely to agree with option B and let's look at the last question so the question is the use of armed drone aircraft controlled by far distant operators could be unethical because um, this I thought was the relevant paragraph for this question but let's go through the answer choices so first, there's a risk of injury to civilians, obviously, that's true. Second, the operator may not be a soldier. Um, I don't think that makes it unethical because you could have a trained drone aircraft flyer who would not be a soldier but would still be trained and that would not be unethical. C, that terrorists are protected by international law, obviously that's false. And D, that their operators can only view through a remote camera, that does not seem to be unethical. Um, and so I think that the correct answer is A. Next, let's move on to the next question type, so true, false, can't tell, where you decide if a statement logically follows based on the information in the passage. And this is your passage, this is the entirety of it, so make sure to pause the video now and read through it, underline any important key points, and then restart the video again. So this passage talks about practical exams. Now the purpose of these practical exams is to ensure that the practitioners obviously have attained a satisfactory level of knowledge. So they want to check their competency. Um, all candidates are required to pass parts one and two of the practical examination, so PE1 and PE2, right? And unless they pass that, they will not get a license and they need the license to be eligible to practice. Now, to be eligible to sit this PE1 and PE2, they mu the candidates must have completed the final diploma and have some sort of a recognized certificate showing that they have been assessed to a diploma level. So they need to have completed some sort of diploma then they're eligible to write PE1 and PE2. Once they write and pass PE1 and PE2, then they are given a license to practice. Now there is one exception to the diploma route and that is for applicants holding an advanced theory certificate. And these people are immediately eligible to sit PE1 and PE2. So there's lots of information in this passage um, and it's quite technical. So let's look at the first question, which is advanced theory certificates are treated as being comparable to diplomas when considering eligibility to take the practical exams. So that's this statement right here. If you have an advanced theory certificate, you are immediately eligible to sit PE1 and PE2. So this statement is true. Let's look at the next question. The diploma is the highest level qualification that can be taken before moving on to the practical exams. Now, all that's mentioned in the passage is that you need to have a diploma to sit PE1 and PE2. There is no mention of what is the highest level of qualification or certification, so we actually can't tell in this scenario. We do not have enough information. Next is that licenses are awarded after successful completion of the diploma, advanced theory, PE1 and PE2. Now, this statement is false 
because you either need to do the diploma and then PE1 and PE2 or advanced theory and then PE1 and PE2, not both. And our final question is, people who have initially qualified outside of the country can take PE1 and PE2 and be awarded a license to practice. Now this may be true because they've spoken about how anyone who wants to write PE1 and PE2 must have completed the final diploma and they need to have a recognized certificate to show that but there's no mention of where the diploma needs to be obtained so there's no mention of any specific country and so therefore it is reasonable to assume that people who have initially qualified outside of the country and have a diploma can obviously as long as they take PE1 and PE2 and pass of course they can be awarded a license to practice so this statement is true now before we end the video I quickly just want to go through some top tips for the verbal reasoning section that will help you not only improve your score but also answer these questions faster and more efficiently so my first tip is to practice speed reading so this is really important because as you would have noticed already this section is very very tough on time so you can be more efficient by practicing speed speed reading and there's lots of ways to do this so you can download the chrome extension speed um, and that will just help you speed read just normal articles blogs anything that you read on the internet so doing this a month or two before your ucat exam is really really useful um, because that will vastly improve your reading speed and therefore will make you much more efficient in this section second as i mentioned before do not use your own knowledge even if you think that a particular statement is true based on your common sense and your own knowledge if that particular passage does not mention anything about it you would have to answer can't tell or false depending on the situation next is to practice at any given opportunity now the verbal reasoning section essentially assesses your ability to analyze written information so you are presented with written information all the time in life reading blog posts reading newspaper articles anything like that is you being exposed to written and verbal information so it would be a really good idea to practice reading these passages really fast and it would be a really good idea to try to figure out what the conclusion of these news articles or blog articles are um, and that will really help you build up your critical thinking skills and it'll be easier to draw conclusions in the verbal reasoning section my next tip is to be strategic so know what question type you're worse at so for example i was worse at the drawing inferences type question and so what i did before my ucat exam is focus specifically on that question type and try to improve um, my performance in the drawing inferences type questions however in the final exam itself i knew that i was really bad at the drawing inferences type question and i would average around two out of four questions correct whereas in the true false can't tell type question i was averaging three or even all four questions correct and so it made more sense to do all of the true false can't tell questions first because i knew that i was more likely to get those questions correct than the drawing inferences one and then i moved on to the drawing inferences type of questions another thing to be strategic is look at the length of the passage often i would come across really long passages and in fact i would have to scroll down to read the entire passage now every single question in the ucat is is weighted equally so it doesn't matter how long or short the passage is you will be awarded one point per question and so it's a good idea to skip all the really long passages because they're obviously going to be more time consuming and do all the really short passages first and that will really help you save time and be efficient with your time management and you'll be more strategic and you'll be more likely to get more questions correct next is to remember to skim read it is not important to read every single word in every single sentence of, of the entire passage just skim read and kind of get the gist of things because your passage is there while you're answering the questions if you've forgotten something um, you can always go back to the passage while you're answering questions and look for that keyword it's important to just kind of know where the information is and that's why skim reading is useful so if I know a question is say on the Geneva Conventions I'll know that the Geneva Convention was mentioned in the second paragraph so I'll exclusively look there so it's important to have a general idea of where all the information is but it's not important to actually know or retain all the information because the passage is always there next to you and my last tip is that reading the questions first might actually be useful because if you read all four of the questions first while you're reading the passage you know exactly what you're looking for and you can quickly answer the questions and if you find any keywords in the questions you can look for those keywords in the passage and perhaps find the answer faster 
So obviously these are some tips that I've given and these are strategies that worked for me, but it might be different for you. So my advice would be to practice and to try to implement these strategies that I've mentioned. And if they don't work out for you, you can switch to another strategy. So if you found this video useful, make sure to like, share and subscribe and comment down below what video you would like to see next. See you later.